All right, Samantha, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon or good whatever time of day you're joining. I'm Samantha Hardin and I'm the principal investigator of FedEx, which basically this means this is uh, part of my job is to oversee this program. But what's more important is that uh, the connection, the accountability and the fun that we can have when we're pursuing these health behaviors. I cannot believe we're in week eight and I hope that you and your team and your community have really benefited from this program. And I know that these Facebook Lives have been um, every Wednesday for us that we've been um, coming together as, as a team that's trying to support the program and it's just flown by. I've also loved the variety and dynamic movements that we've seen that can help us get to our 15 minutes slash a mile of physical activity. But one of my favorite types of movement is yoga. And so I'm gonna do some seated yoga postures for you today. If you'd like to take something standing or amplify to get your workout in, feel free to do so. I'm looking over at a chair that you can't see off screen, but you can also be seated in a chair if um, sitting on the ground is not comfortable. I'm actually sitting on a bolster. So if you have a blanket or a towel or a pillow that you'd like to put under your hips, so just get really comfortable for our final mile to get across the finish line of this eight week program. If you'd like to find each vertebra pillow stacked on top of the next, that might help you find a neutral spine. So sometimes you can use straight spine, straight spine, but really we're looking for what your natural spine's curvature is. Perhaps you're even bringing your nose and your chin and your chest away from perhaps the computer. We're spending so much time trying to sit forward and look engaged in these Zoom meetings. If you'd like, give yourself permission to back up, stacking the crown of your head on top of the rest of your neck. Perhaps the hands are palms down or palms up. Without judgment, just notice what your hands or your wrists chose to do. Down typically means a sense of grounding and up means a sense of receptivity. So just noticing which way you chose to find your seat. Legs can be crossed and if that's not working, just extend the legs out. Give yourself some space with being here intentionally. You can also sit on your heels by bending at the knees if that's more comfortable. With all that said, I'll invite you to engage in equal parts breathing. Maybe the eyes are closed or we're gazing down the nose to just find a soft gaze. And then I'll count for an inhale of one, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Noticing if your inhale is a little bit longer or shorter than my count and letting that be okay too. Just finding that your exhale is as long as your inhale. The shoulders drop away from the ears. Settle in. Just holding your spine up in its neutral position is still engaging the core. So we're still doing activity here. Perhaps taking one final equal parts breathing for your inhale. And your exhale, maybe parting the lips, sigh out of the mouth, let it go. And either keeping the eyes closed or gently fluttering the eyes open. We'll inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. And exhale to cactus the arms. So by cactus the arms, we're kind of making a goal post, maybe bringing um, the elbows down to create a V or a W, or trying to squeeze the shoulder blades together, open across the chest. We'll inhale, lift up, exhale, squeeze it in. Perhaps to get a little stretch in the neck, you also let the gaze follow the fingertips. I learned this one from Anna and it's so subtle, but it works so well. 
Final inhale, lift up. And exhale, squeeze down. Keeping with this motion, if that feels good for you, or releasing the arms out wide, so into a T-shape, the thumbs are behind you, and then bring the thumbs even farther back. So I'm still seated with my vertebra pillows stacked, so really trying to lift through the low belly, but bringing the hands and the arms behind me to feel an expansion across the chest, which is really challenging when I spend so much of my day hunched and typing. Try to find that equal parts breathing in and out right here as well. And then exhale, release the hands down by your side and just take notice. Notice where there's an echo of release, of warmth, of stretch. Then inhale, sweep the arms back up overhead. Release the right hand down by your side. Maybe it's just a fingertip or maybe you have some blocks or books or maybe the hand reaches the ground. Reach the left armpit up. And then if you have that connection, that length across the left side body, start to hinge closer towards the right. Active through your fingertips. Deep breath in. Exhale, sink a little deeper. Let the throat be open. Let the breath move through your body. Inhale back up to center and exhale, hands come back down. I'm doing these little breaks purposefully so that you can just check in. How does one side feel compared to the other when you invite it to engage? Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead and exhale, take it to the other side. So sometimes we start to do things maybe with less intention because we're just tick-tocking left and right. So just trying to take a moment to place yourself where it feels comfortable or maybe feels like a bit of a challenge. Stay here, reach and fold. Inhale back on center and exhale, practice the arms. So this is stop one where we inhale, perhaps looking up and then squeezing the elbows together, staying here if this works for you today, or bringing your left elbow under your right and then bring the elbows away from the nose. So we're still sitting with our lifted low belly, stacked spine, and then broadening across our upper back. Lift the elbows, lift the gaze, and exhale, squeeze it in. Now this can be one centimeter up and one centimeter down, almost like I can barely see it. It's like flossing between the shoulder blades. Or you can get really expansive and lift up and over and exhale, fold in. Whatever the flexion and extension that serves you today, maybe it's a small movement, a big movement, just moving with your breath. Last time. Come back to neutral, unwind, and reset. Just feeling that openness, warmth, that echo of work in the shoulders. And inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. Again, the cactus arms is option one. You can keep moving and squeezing or stack now your right arm under your left. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> and then bring the elbows away from the nose, broadening across the upper back. And then inhale, lift the chest, lift the gaze, lift the elbows, and exhale, squeeze it in. So this is subtle work. This can count as strengthening, lengthening. I can feel this in my abdominals, the core um, area in the middle of my body as I lift and lengthen and exhale, squeeze it in. So there's a little bit of heat building at my core or my center. Maybe yours is too. Last time, take it to your full rotation. Unwind, sweep the arms up overhead, and then exhale, fully let them come back down towards the earth. So we've taken our flexion and extension and our lateral. So now it's time for twist because we're going to move our spine in all six directions. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. And exhale, left hand comes to outside of right knee. 
or a thigh. If you're seated in the chair, maybe there's a armrest that you can use to help with your twist. Remembering to keep the spine tall, stacked, and neutral. So you're really twisting, opening. If the hand across the body is not accessible or doesn't feel good, keep the right hand on the right knee or the right side. Perhaps there's uh, body parts in the way of the twist. You're still getting the work by activating the muscles over towards the left side. Nope, this is your right side, but it's my left. I'm mirroring you. Deep breath in. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, arms lift up, back on center, and exhale, hands can plant. I should have said this before, but if you're seated cross leg, feel free to take the opposite cross if you need that balance. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead, and then we'll take it to the left side. So your right hand to the outside of your left knee, thigh, hip, armchair. If that doesn't feel good, hand can stay on the left side as well. We're just trying to activate the musculature as we find our twist. Really breathe here. Think of it as a gentle massage as the breath radiates up the body and then surrenders back down. Last big inhale. And exhale, come on center. Feeling that settle. And now we'll transition to our tabletop position, which will be wrist under the shoulder. So you can move that bolster or prop. And if you're in a seated um, chair, that's still fine. Um, I'll, uh, I will actually grab my chair and show you what we can do with that. So from tabletop, we're going to find all six movements of the spine as well. So this is typically called cat cow. We'll tuck the toes, lift the chest, lift the gaze for our cow pose. Press the tops of the feet in for our cat pose. So if you're on the ground, stay just like this for three more breaths. And I'll just show that in the chair, we can just stay modified, lift the chest and press down. So very similar movement that we just did from seated. Maybe you can have your legs crossed and you're still down. You're still finding that flexion and extension. But press the feet into the earth and maybe feel the hips and the glutes engaged. And then from here, for those in the chair, we're going to bring our right knee towards our left elbow. So we're just going to march and twist. And those in tabletop will bring their opposite elbow to the opposite knee as well, but with an extension and a release. So if you're in the chair, stay with the march and the twist. And if you're in tabletop, it's left elbow, right knee, press back down right elbow, left knee, press back down. You might be feeling that work in the low belly. We've got this one more minute right here with this work, firing up. Last time. We'll inhale the cow, exhale the cat, press back, walk the hands back and find our comfortable stacked position and seat. So by coming into tabletop, for those of you who did or were able, we may have felt a little bit more heat and fire in the shoulders, but no matter where you were, we found our flexion and extension. And now our mile is almost complete. So we don't have time to do the rest, but um, we will add more videos if you're interested in that, but all of this can be done from a seated position. Um, if you ended with crossed legs, feel free to take the opposite cross that you did when we were originally seated. I'd like to close with a loving kindness meditation. Again, the hands can be on the thighs or lifted up. Hands can be on the belly and heart center. You can be wherever it feels good for you. And I'll invite you to softly close your eyes or find a gaze down the nose or in front of the mat. And say with your still small voice inside yourself, may I be safe. 
May I be healthy and strong. May I be at ease in my community. May I be happy and full of joy. May I be filled with loving kindness. Breathe in and breathe out. One more time, perhaps still saying may I, or perhaps saying your own name, just acknowledging how that might feel for you. So may I be safe. May I be healthy and strong. May I be at ease in my community. May I be happy and filled with joy. May I be filled with loving kindness. Gently release the hands down by the side, maybe fluttering the eyes open, deep breath in. And exhale, sigh. There are longer and deeper loving meditation or metta uh, practices that we can do, but just since we're short on time, I'll encourage you to practice the I version. Uh, there's a lot of data that suggests that um, if we take care of ourselves and engage in self-care and self-compassion, that also radiates out into the world. There are many of us who have um, been told or have a lived experience that we need to be focused on others instead. And that may be true, but we can only give from our overflow or our filled cups. So it's, it, I would encourage you to find time to share that loving kindness with yourself and then to others. So there are multiple practices and we can talk more about that in our next FedEx series. Thanks for joining and I'll turn it over to Denise. Well, hello everybody. And I agree with Samantha. I can't believe how fast the last eight weeks have gone. And I think I have really enjoyed the Facebook Lives because we have gotten to know our counterparts in Virginia. And it's been fun to do something together um, as we're working towards a common goal of eating healthier and um, some physical activity. So we hope we can continue in the future to do this project together and, and keep sharing with each other. So. Our last snack that we're gonna to do today is called four ingredient peanut butter granola. And um, this would be great in the um, yogurt parfait that Glenn shared with us a couple weeks ago. But we're gonna show you a little different twist of how to eat it um, other than with a yogurt parfait or in a bowl of yogurt. So we're gonna start out, um, this is using quick oats and um, the first ingredient is five cups of oats. You could use the old fashioned kind or the quick cooking kind. And I have four cups measured. So here's our fifth cup. And then our next ingredients are a half a cup of honey. And I measured that earlier. And we're gonna put a half a cup of peanut butter into the honey. And then Erin is going to quickly put this in the microwave so that um, the peanut butter starts to melt. And then we'll stir that up. This is a really, really quick snack. You could whip it up. Um, it does take a little bit to bake, so you could make it early um, in the day and it'd be perfect for when the kids got home from um, school, or I like to eat it in just a plain bowl of yogurt in the morning for breakfast. Um, it really kind of sticks with you throughout the morning, and I don't find myself snacking all morning if I eat some of this. And um, so we have made it, and I just keep it stored in an ice cream bucket with a airtight lid on it. And it says it'll keep for two weeks, but I've kept it much longer than that. And it stays very um, fresh in that airtight container. And um, 
So you'd have it on hand to do a lot of snacking um, throughout the week. And it's taking, it said it only would take 30 seconds. And of course, today it's taking much longer than that. So we hope everybody in Virginia, um, your weather is so much nicer than ours that you've been out getting lots of physical activity while us in Wyoming have still been having um, snow and terrible winds. So we're kind of homebound. Uh, the weather is supposed to get up to 70 this weekend. So everybody is thrilled that we're gonna be able to be outside. Our next ingredient and last ingredient is one um, teaspoon of vanilla. Pour that in there. And again, mix it up thoroughly. And then just pour it over your oats. And stir it up real good. We're going to bake it at 275 degrees for um, 20 minutes. And then we're going to take it out of the oven, uh, stir it up real good so it's um, going to get equally brown all over. And um, then as it sits, it, it comes out of the oven still kind of really soft, but you'll just let it set and it gets um, crispy. And if you will bake it on like some parchment paper on your cookie sheet, the cleanup is much, much easier. And if you're like me, I don't really like to do dishes that much. So anything we can do to make cleanup easier is I'm all in. And it smells really, if you like peanut butter, you will love this. With that, we're pretty well mixed up. So we'll just take our baking sheet, put a sheet of parchment on it. And when you put it on the cookie sheet, just kind of get it all um, evened out so you don't have um, really deep places or shallow places. So we will put this in the oven and, and just let it bake. And we'll be signed off before it is done, but I did bring some that's already been baked so you can see what it looks like. And we'll put that in in just a minute. So there's our done product. And my new favorite way to eat this, I shouldn't say favorite, but is as a tortilla roll up. So just take your tortilla and today um, you could either use peanut butter and spread it on your tortilla or today I'm using Nutella because I wanted the chocolate fix for the day. And just, you don't need a whole bunch. Just spread it thinly on your tortilla. And 
we do a lot of cooking with our 4 H kids. And what we've found is if some of our kids are allergic to peanuts, so we always have a Nutella option and um, they like it. And I become a real fan of Nutella because I love chocolate. So you can't go wrong with chocolate. And then I just sprinkle some of this granola on top. And then just roll it up. This would make a really quick breakfast um, to send on the school bus with the kids or um, when they get home from school and then you can cut it, cut it in half because it makes a pretty good, I think a street taco size tortilla would work really well. So you can do that and you have a quick and easy snack or breakfast in about two seconds. So with that, um, again, we hope you have enjoyed the last eight weeks. Um, we've got lots of good physical activity ideas that we can do indoors um, when the weather's not cooperative. Um, and also some really good snack ideas. So I hope everyone's been trying those as we've gone along. And with that, we're gonna close for this session of FitX. And we hope to see you when we get started. And we'll be sending out uh, reminders or announcements of when the next sessions will be starting in both Virginia and Wyoming. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.